All right, welcome back. It is still a news up. Yes, we'll be shifting gears right now away from the health. Let's look at concerns around the security. Virtually every part of Nigeria today is faced with one form of insecurity or another. If it is not banditry, it is armed robbery. If it is not a farmer's earners conflict, it is Boko Haram, terrorism all across a um, uh, better part of the north. And this had uh, brought about um, the military trying to curb uh, uh, you know, many of these um, security challenges across Nigeria. And this wouldn't have been the case if we have uh, an effective uh, security, uh, effective security force, which is um, the police. So today on the show, we'll be looking at the concerns around uh, demilitarizing Nigeria, uh, building uh, the uh, police and uh, into an effective security force. And that is our focus right about now. And we're being joined by a social commentator, Adeola Shueton, uh, who's joined us via Zoom this morning. So good to have you on the show, sir. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. My pleasure to be here. So good to have you. We will, so we're open to to be joined by, okay, we have Mike. We have Mike out there, who is a conflict analyst on crisis in northern Nigeria, also joining us via Zoom. Mike, good morning and welcome to News Up. Thank you. My pleasure to be here. Fantastic. Um, let me start the conversation with you, Mike, um, um, knowing fully well your, your area of, of specialty which is conflict resolution within the northern Nigeria. Uh, conflict analysts. You heard about uh, the error bombing in, the, in, the, in, in Kaduna just yesterday. We have uh, mixed figures here and there about the numbers of casualties. What, what can you make of that um, ugly incident, uh, Mike? Let's start with that. OK, I think um, we have a frozen signal there. Uh, with Mike. Okay, I can speak with Adela. Can you, hear me? can you hear me now? Oh, yes, I can hear you now. Speak on, Mike. Yeah, go ahead. All right, please, please. It's all right, you're telling me something. You're saying something. You're asking me something. You, I did ask you what you make of the error bombing of Kaduna, of some area of Kaduna, a village in Kaduna yesterday that has led to the death of, um, of um, um, a tens of, um, of villagers. What can you make of that incident? Mike, if you can hear me. Well, this is one of the half of war. Whether I want it or not, northern Nigeria is in a state of war. Whether the government is denying it or not, this is no longer terrorism. This is no longer banditry. This is what we call war. We are in a state of war. And um, it has lingered for a very long time. The strike on the village in Igadi is a very sad one. It highlights the fact that northern Nigeria is in pain. It is in agony. The fact is we have been brutalized, we have been terrorized, not by the military, but by terrorists, by people who are riding arms, who are riding on bikes, who are kidnapping, who are looting, who are burning down villages. And um, what really happened yesterday was a kind of mistake that happens all the, that happens at least in all clans. I know the US also had in the past friendly fire where their jets mistakenly bombed maybe their troops. <laughs> what happened? So what really happened was a mishap that should have not happened. Probably the army should have had their intelligence right. They should have had men on the ground who would have directed the strike. These people that were attacked yesterday or they were bombed yesterday were actually celebrating the death of their prophet. And unfortunately, I mean, not yesterday, three days ago, and unfortunately, the Nigerian army thought it was the massing of bandits and then they mistakenly bombed them. But the good thing was the army actually owned up what actually happened and the state government also promised compensation promised to take care of the victim the treatment and other things and we pray that this kind of thing should not be allowed to happen and that brings up the fact that the government 
the federal government needs to quickly build up its military to end up terrorism. It's not only happening mm. in Gaddi, it is happening in Chukun local government, it is happening in, um, in Giwa local government, it is happening in Burningwari local government, where terrorists, armed terrorists, have overwhelmed the community. And they are setting up parallel government. People cannot walk free without being taxed. You cannot do your thing without being killed or being kidnapped and asked to pay money. This is ungovernable choice. And um, the federal government needs to act quickly to restore law and order. Whether you want it or not, it is going to move to down south, except quick actions are taken. That is it for now. Thank you. All right, let me come to um, Adeola uh, this morning. Uh, thank you so much, Adeola, for joining us on the program. Um, you've, you've heard the thoughts there by uh, Mike concerning the unfortunate incident that occurred in Kaduna on Sunday. Um, we'll also like to get your thoughts about it. Well, uh, first thing, that is not the first time it's been happening over the years, particularly since this uh, civilian government uh, came to be in 1999. Of course, there is no problem with that solution, none. But in looking at the solution, you have to look at the basics. What are the causes. First, there is the case of total, total dislocation of the context of Nigeria as a country. There is uh, a conflict over the years on land ownership, residence, and uh, so-called immigrants. And there's also contest of power on the basis of uh, who controls what. Of course, poverty, mass poverty, which is the bottom line of all these uh, conflicts. Yeah, it's a state of war, no doubt about that. Anywhere you have not only killing, not only insecurity, have a, a, a feeling that you are not secured. You don't wait you are killed, that you are not secured, that you can be killed the next day, the next minute, the next hour. That is a, is a state of war. And this is even worse, because we are talking of a war that is not conventional, where war is not declared officially, but people know that they have to kill every day. And at times getting, you know, away with it. And you discover that when you look at the, the structure of Nigeria, and this is where we're we'll talking, that there is a need for referendum. People must decide how they want to live together. To me, that's a major issue too. Because uh, when you have a nation, that lives on falsehood and lives on the basis of unity at one point, things like this will continue to happen. We need to reconsider Nigeria by what terms people want to live. And all issues must be cleared. You see, uh, nationhood is, to me, is artificial, it's artificial. Native is biological and natural. I'm an Igbama now. I cannot change my citizenship. I cannot change, I, I cannot change my native from Abeokuta to become uh, maybe Texas, no. But I can change my citizenship. So what that means is that we don't overemphasize citizenship at all costs without, because it's just a geographic uh, issue. A lot of Nigerians, even as we are talking now, you see people changing that. 
citizenship applying through internet and what have you. But they cannot. If you are from uh, Benin, if you go to US, Canada, you cannot say you are not from Benin. Now you can abandon Nigeria totally. You know, an environment that goes uh, somewhere outside Nigeria cannot say, even if he has, uh, I mean, tribal So what that means is that you don't pretend that the nation is working. It's not working. Apart from poverty, there must be a discussion on how people want to live together. And we just have to understand that. Having said that, now you look at our government, this one, a successful government before it, we discover that they are not proactive. You see, I think El Rufai came out publicly to say that uh, he, he took money to appease headsmen that came to his country, I mean, to, that came to his, his town to come and keep people. And he was saying it openly, and nothing happened. And these are even not uh, Nigerians. They are foreigners. They are foreign uh, Fulani experts from Chad and Niger. So when you look at loopholes like this, and on seriousness of COVID, then it, it, it empowers, it has criminals on both sides or other sides of criminality. So we need to discuss Nigeria, not on the basis mm -hmm. of gunpoint unity. No, 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 no. Even in many other towns, like the, the gentleman said, that it can move to the south. It's already in the south. It's already, it's only that the proportion, you know, is different. It's already in the south. Because you start seeing intra-tribal, that is getting into terrorism. Something happened, I think, in Osho about a month ago, where two towns were fighting and killing themselves, burning houses. Two towns with two kings. I was at uh, a small town going to Lagos, Akabekuta from Lagos. They had three towns, I mean, three kings. So the question of how even community will live together should be discussed openly apart from discussing nationhood. And I think we just have to look at the social perspective of this, of this conflict, look at the economic perspective of this conflict with a view to resolving them. If not, gone alone cannot do it. They cannot. The only thing that we done is for people to have confidence that look, we are natives of these people, I mean, of this town or village. We are citizens of this country and we are secured by law. So that security will not be, you know, blackmailed or accused of being a uh, cashier at any time. And those, and you see, the other time when Buhari came, they said terrorists have been uh, negotiated. And I spoke on TV there that is wrong. When some terrorists are volunteering, they are declaring that they are no more terrorists. It may be a banana thrown at monkey and which happened to be all you need to do you have killed people you must okay. be killed you must go to jail all, 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 so all right you don't, you don't... all right adeola we 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 have a very limited time we have very limited time so we, we we'll try to be very fast with the answers but then i also need to go let me go back to mike i'll ask this question for for both of you so two of you can react to it very quickly. Um, here's the situation, uh, Mike. From 1999, just like yeah. Adeola had mentioned, we have a situation where there have been, we've had the military participating, even now that we're in a democracy, we've had the military participating in one oppression or the other, where sometimes the lives of civilians have been put at risk. O OD is a major yeah. uh, example. We have the Zaki Biam as well. And there are other examples people would want to support, but then we saw what happened on a Sunday. And to some people, they feel this is not, uh, there should be no excuse with this level of technology whatsoever. Uh, so is yeah. there any way at yeah. any point where we can take out the military completely from the system and have an effective police force to handle matters of internal security? 
Yeah, you are right. And, and we, we, what we have is a kind of hangover or transfer of militarization from the past military regime to democracy. And the Basinger being a democrat, I mean, being a former military man, did not divest the military from our democracy. So the same thing happened with, um, with uh, Buhari. The last man before Buhari actually tried to open up the states where democrats could even in. But right now, the situation we have does not call for just policing. Right now, we're having a war at our hand, and it is creeping, or it's already in the south. We need the military to end this war before we can now talk about bringing in real, I mean, policing to it. The military is actually overstretched. It is virtually in about 22 to 23 states of the Federation. And when you push the military, when you pull the military out of the states, what happens? The police is not properly equipped. The police, I don't, I'm not sure we have up to 500,000 men as police force. And a lot of them are tied down, serving as ADCs to the so-called big men. So that, for now, is practically impossible. The fact is we need to recruit more men into the police force. We need to recruit more men into the army. And then there is, there is this need for the military civilian, I mean, you know, in, interaction, so that a lot of these things can be reduced. But for now, we need to take military actions against what is threatening our democracy and our country. And of course, let me reply, Adiola, the, the present government, the present president, Tinubu, was a member of NADECO. These are people that are also committed in those days to restructuring this country. I'm sure Tinubu, when he was a senator, said something like he never believed in Nigeria, except maybe it is restructured. Now he is the president. He has everything at his beck and call. Every true Nigerian, every Nigerian that wants a betterment for this country knows that there is the need for the country to be restructured. I'm from the North. There's no doubt about it. But I don't want somebody else to come and take over my ancestral home. And I don't want the influx of a foreign headman to my land, destroying my land. We need to sit down and talk about this country. We need to know how this country is going to be run. The Southeast is boiling because they are excluded. The field excluded. And instead of us to pacify them, we are rubbing it at their face. The South, the Southeast is also at war. The only place that there seems to be a semblance of peace is the Southwest. And of course, with what is happening, Sunday Boho is there, and he has a lot of followers. And of course, there are a lot of headmen, foreign headmen, in the bush, even in the Southwest. So we need restructuring. We need to sit down and we need to talk. All these things need to come at a certain <clears throat> price. Vanquish those people that are levying war against the Federal Republic. When foreigners come to Nigeria to attack your own citizens, whether they are Yoruba, whether they are Idomas, whether they are Nukis, whether they are Thieves or Hausa or Fulani, they are foreigners. When they come to attack a citizen of the country, that means they are levying war against that country. And the federal government, the president, needs to be very swift. That is what was lacking in the former administration of Buhari. He pampered terrorists to a certain level. I thought by now that the current president, the incumbent president, should have gone tough. But what game plan does he have? And I tell you this, if he does not come down hard on this terrorist, whether from the north, whether from the south, in the next two years, he'll be grappling with a big problem in his hands. All right, let, let's, let's carry on with the conversation, um, um, Mike. Um, here we are dealing with uh, this situation, and just like you rightly said, there are people who are of the opinion, uh, some people are of the opinion that um, the military, now this is not taking anything away from the military, um, particularly when you look at the huge sacrifices they've made, but there are people who are of the opinion yeah. that the military does not even want the crisis in the country to end, maybe because of the benefits, uh, they seem to be making some benefits. As much as I, ha I find that hard to believe, it, is, it seems to be a, a strong opinion amongst certain Nigerians. What is your thoughts about that? Well, I, I, when I worked with Tukurumamu as his chief bureau officer for Northern I mean, for the North, David Herat, he said the same thing, that some military officers are not really 
in tune with the war in the North ending. Well, he has his entitled his opinion, but I just told you my opinion. I told you that um, it is not all about the military, actually. It is about the body language of the president. Right now, I have seen a kind of an ante being up by the military against the terrorists. They are killing the terrorists. They are bombarding them in the bush. And we are seeing dead bodies, on, unlike in the past, where the military will come and say, oh, 20 terrorists have been shot and them have been killed and we don't have any evidence to prove. So it is not actually the fact that the military is um, maybe benefiting. Nobody wants to die. They, the military too are at the front line. A lot of them have been killed. If you go to Taraba recently, about two or three soldiers were killed. And um, back in Kaduna, a lot of them, a military plane was shot down in Niger by double by Dogo's men. So you discover that it is the military who are suffering, and nobody, including the military, wants to die. But the body language of the president will help. According to Kaskan Lambo, the military actually followed what the president and the commander in chief did. And he said, and I quote, well, the former president, for certain reasons, do not want the war against bandits to end our terrorists. And that is why the military is incapacitated. And uh, I think I agree with him. The same Nigerian military was in Liberia. They were in Sierra Leone. They were in Lebanon. They were in uh, Somalia. And they did a lot of things. And they have, I mean, they won medals. They won laurels. And uh, we fought some wars. You know, we fought the civil war. We successfully also concluded the, the, I mean, the crisis, the military, the crisis in the Niger Delta. So it is not the fact that the military wants to keep this ending, I mean, this war on ending or lingering. It is the body language of the commander in chief. And that is why I'm saying if Tinubu wants this crisis, this war to end, he can do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for that, uh, for that contribution. I think we have um, uh, Adiola back with us right about now. Let's, let's go. We're hoping that we can get Adiola, Adiola back and get his perspective. Um, yes, um, Mike, we, we'll stay with you for as long as we wait for Adiola. Um, tell us your perspective. Uh, you had said initially that uh, we don't have enough policemen to man our uh, our national our domestic uh, concerns, domestic security concerns. And so it just might be difficult yeah. to, to get the army off the streets at this point in time. That brings to mind uh, the conversation around um, state policing. Uh, uh, d don't you think uh, we should revisit that conversation again and see how we can uh, increase and improve on our domestic uh, uh, security apparatus. What do you think, Mike? I agree with you wholeheartedly. There is the need for policing to complement the federal police. And I'm sure before now, we do have the native authorities in the 60s, before it was abolished by the military, and then they came up with the federal system. In America, we have the county, we have the sheriff, we have the state police department, and then we have other local law enforcement agencies. Now, we have, I have no problem with having a local police. I mean, the state police, even community police. You understand? It, I mean, it will help to dial down a lot of criminalities that is going on. It will help to stabilize a particular area. But the fear is the military, I mean, the, the, the government, the, the individual states might abuse the use of state police. And that is where we, I think there needs to be a proper constitutional framework of state police. Like, I'll give you an example. In a few days to the end of the former governor's administration, that is Aerofight's administration, he ordered, a, I mean, the local vigilantes, which was formed by the state, into a small community. And what happened was mayhem. You see, when a government a, a governor controls the police without check and without balance. He tends towards authoritarianism or dictatorship. So those clamoring for state police are doing so, but they should also be aware of the fact that the state police could be abused 
by the incumbent governors in such states. And for the fact that if Nigeria today has a state police, we are actually moving towards a process of restructuring. So state policing is good for the country. It is good. I'm happy you've agreed that it is. Um... Uh, however, there are concerns that you have also no, raised. No, I never disagree with that. How do, with that. how do we navigate the concerns? How do we navigate the concern? Because our primary focus this morning is how we can improve our domestic security force, how we can uh, protect the lives of Nigerians, however we can do it. Uh, so how do you think we can navigate these fears, the fears of um, our state policing? Well, first of all, you see, the whole democratic process itself, like Adiola said, is, in, is a bit shaky. You cannot build on something. You cannot build a, I mean, a city or a house on a shaky foundation. We need to sit down. We need to talk. And we need to bring, we need a constitution that will prevent autocratic men, men that are, men that are corrupt, men that are manifestly proven to be bigots, religious and tribal bigots. We need a constitution that will prevent them from becoming either a governor, either a president, so that we can move ahead. We need to also, we need a constitution that will, that is an all-inclusive, that will bring about every shade of Nigerian into the polity. It's not a constitution where one is excluded, like what is happening today in Nigeria. Once the president becomes, the president is the all and all. He will tell you 95%, you voted for me, 5%, you do not vote for me. So therefore, you are not entitled. We don't want such constitution. We want a constitution like the American constitution, which was able to shut out Donald Trump when he attempted to tweak the laws. We need a constitution that should be able to tell President Tinubu that, look, this is the wrong path, and for that, you are wrong, and this is it. We need a constitution that will put state governors in check we need a constitution that will be able to prevent foreigners from coming to take over our ancestral homes. If we do that, I'm sure we can now, I mean, if we have such constitution, I'm sure that constitution will also provide a framework whereby state policy will take place. All right, uh, Mike O'Day, I wish we could go on and on uh, to continue with this. But then in just um, 30 seconds, Mike, I'll need you to speak into the issue that happened on speak on the issue that happened on Sunday. Um, it's something that Nigerians wouldn't want to see happen again. What exactly should the Nigerian military do and all security agents do to ensure that this never happens again? Because all we've heard are apologies, uh, condolences, but this will not bring the lives of innocent Nigerians that were lost. So how can we avoid this completely? Yeah. Uh, moving forward in the next 30 seconds before we round, wrap up. More intelligence on the ground. Civil military relations. I'm sure, probably, I am not speaking, I'm only assuming the military felt a lot of people were gathering. And so that means the bandits were gathering because that place that is also prone to banditry. A lot of these people, I mean, a lot of the communities in the Gabi local government have uh, people in the community, residents of the community in Igabi had actually run away. It's, I mean, that place is actually overwhelmed by the bandits. So the military thought probably that these are bandits that were massing and they attacked. But if they had intelligence, people on the ground to give them reports, like what we see in the Americans, what we see with the Israelis, they could actually have made the right call. So we need to depend not, we need a lot of kinetics, we need a lot of boots on the ground, we need a lot of intelligence, and the military needs to be, to, in, to, to you know, to integrate itself into the civilian society. The military needs to, to, to bring, you know, the civilians closer to it, so that uh, once there is anything on tours, once the bandits or the terrorists are around, they could be informed. But a situation where maybe the military is seen seen as a very high, I mean, you know, a very far off, and you are scared of approaching it, you don't want to go near it, then how do you volunteer information? The military, if it wants this war to be won, and if it wants such things to stop happening, needs to come down, 
talk to the civilians, interact with the civilians. Of course, we love our military. The military is protecting us, and we know that by decimating or decapitating these bandits and terrorists, right. they are helping our cause. <laughs> but they need to reach out. All right, thank to you. The people. Thank you and so this, much. By reaching out to them, a lot of this mishap will be All right, thank you. Thank you so people. much. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Mike O'Day for being a part of the program today. We really appreciate your presence here today. Um, a conflict analyst on crisis in Northern Nigeria. Thank you so much for being a part of the program.